Okay, thank you so much for joining us yet again in sports uh, updates today. We're just going to give you updates on sports, and of course, it's Vanguard Live. I, uh, she's Dami. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, together, the two of us will definitely take you to the promised land of entertainment. You know, spicy stories that will definitely make your day. We're looking at countdown, countdown everywhere. Talk about uh, the Tokyo Olympics. We told you yesterday it was 164 days, but today it has reduced by a day. It is 163 days, you know, to the commencement of uh, Tokyo Olympics. And equally, we're also looking at the countdown to February 22nd, you know, when the Blockbuster Boxing Championship is going to happen out there in the United States. Talk about the two of them, Dento Waida and uh, Tyson Fury. Also, another countdown of John Egalo going to face Chelsea. That's, uh, these are just the top headlines that we have today, you know, to update our viewers. Yes, yeah, so uh, these are the, you know, the countdown, the Tokyo countdown, Dento Waida, the wrestling and and that's what people have really been talking about and uh, we are really looking forward to these days waiting for it to come straight from February 22nd and going straight to the Olympic I personally am looking for, towards the Olympic uh, okay yes. as Dami as you look up to the Olympics I look up to boxing yeah. boxing <laughs> is my favorite that's uh, indeed you know where you see two fighters coming you know toe to toe looking face to face eyeball to eyeball and of course punches to punches you know and the you know the two that will definitely you know be uh, trading punches uh, will be Dento Wilder they know him as an animal the beast and indeed Tyson Fury a man who has been away from boxing for a very long time came back and has been causing a lot of sensations remember the, the last fight they fought nobody gave Tyson Fury any chance he survived it and of course it was a draw you know it was very controversial so many people believed that uh, Tyson Fury should have won, but indeed the beast himself, then to Wilder, is talking very, very wide and loud. You know, he says that uh, Fury will not survive his punches this time around, and uh, there are so many growing tensions even in the family of uh, um, Tyson Fury. The wife is beginning to talk. So many people, you know, because uh, there have been a lot of issues, you know, in Tyson Fury, his drug background you know going to hospitals uh, rehabilitation mm -hmm. you know he survived all this and came back and of course yesterday the wife uh, spoke and said uh, you know they are very very concerned of about course his uh, about his health yes the wife says she's really concerned about his health um, you know yeah looking at him i think he has major in his case uh, and he has had that for some time now so she is looking at it that uh, She's concerned about his health, but she says she's not concerned about his victory because you know, anytime you're talking about it, you'll say anytime he leaves, he has yes, he's going to have his victory, it's on his side. So, so the wife is concerned that if the, if the husband loses, perhaps it might affect him mentally. mentally. But if he wins, you know, the, the mental aspect will uh, go with a lot of uh, jubilation and celebration. Automatically, that one is cancelled. Once the victory is there, you know, it's just let's pop the champagne and you know, the regular. She's also looking at that so that maybe he feels um, the mental illness and, and, this, and that is what is really that's why she's really showing her concern um, looking at this uh, towards this match that's coming up. Dami, can you take it? You as a female, you know, just put yourself in her shoes. You know, you are the wife of a boxer. How will you, how will you feel? Of you know, when I'm you see your husband being female, being beaten, you know, mercilessly, are you perhaps you'll be there or you're at home watching? I'll be worried. The one thing, you know, when, you, when you're talking about it, it's like um, my trust is really going to be here because I'll be looking at it. And, you know, looking at his mental status and you're looking at his health wise, when he needs this, well, oh, how is it going to affect me? So I'll be looking and I'll be worried where I'm seated, watching it, that, you know, it is. But also, as you're seated, I'll also be praying for his victory because, you know, when, when you're talking about it, even when you're looking at uh, the, the injury aspect or other things yeah. that will follow, as long as the victory is there, you know, he will keep celebrating that victory. And what he will be telling you is, uh, uh, well, just leave it, leave it. Of course, I won, I won. But, you know, remind us of subtracting the victory. If it is not there, it's really going to affect him. So, I personally will be worried. Okay, that may be worried. And I know that a lot of women will be worried. We talk about victory. Indeed, when victory comes, it heals all the wounds. So, imagine uh, the husband being a boxer coming back winning. And, of course, buying you the latest uh, 
posh car. That's exactly what well, we look, we look up to. For, you want to show off and drive uh, gets, around the town. That gets, you know, want to show off. Yes, not only drive around the town. My husband won that alone. It's you know, it seems something on its own. Yeah, that, yeah. Your husband takes the, the, the your husband takes the pain. Now. He takes the pain. Yes, I know. I I speak down the day to celebrate. Okay, thank you so much. We are still talking about a countdown to the most ferocious fight that we're going to see in boxing history. You know, then to Wilder versus Tyson Fury. It's really been uh, the talking point everywhere, especially among uh, boxing aficionados. All of them are talking about it. I love boxing so much. And uh, not because, uh, you know, I love seeing people being beaten up, but for the fact that uh, that's for me is the, the hallmark of knowing who a man is. You know, when you throw punches and then, uh, but definitely, Tyson Fury and then to Wilder. You know, we'll be going toe to toe on February 22nd. We're just counting down, and we are so much particularly interested in that match because somehow it's only concerns a Nigerian. A Nigerian would be by the side watching and praying and learning the tricks of uh, what these two boxers, you know, that the world have come to know that have the heaviest punches ever. We are talking about Anthony Joshua, a very fine, handsome guy. You know, so many women said. That uh, why should this fine man enter the ring? Because that's his chosen profession. He's going to be sitting and watching them because any of these two boxers that win, Anthony Joshua will now look forward and of course going into the ring to square off against them to determine who indeed is the you know indefatigable heavyweight boxer in the world. Yes. Uh, it, we, that, I think that is part of the reason why people are looking forward to this match because they know that you know someone that wants a person that wins from this one will have to prove it to them. Anthony Joshua. Joshua. So that's why Nigerians are looking forward to it. That Anthony Joshua our handsome boy, as some of us are from Nigeria, we're looking towards that. Who is it? Is it going to compete to the beast himself or, or Tyson? So that is why we're looking forward to it. I personally, I really want to see how it's going to be, and I'm looking forward to the match. By the way, among the two of them, then to Waira and Tyson Fury, these are deadly, deadly boxers. And uh, either because of uh, the gentle manness of uh, Tony Joshua, too many people do not reckon with him, but I think he has got a lot of skills. He has got a lot of boxing prowess that he can display. People look at him because of, uh, you know, how beautiful he is, beautiful in quotes. You know, that young man is uh, indeed more beautiful than some ladies. You know, ladies, I mean, ladies, man, please just... Uh, Take it, but indeed, he's really very, very, yeah, you know, yeah. very, very handsome. We are talking about boxing, Tyson Fury, and then to Wider. Where will it go? It's uh, nobody knows, but the pendulum is on, you know, the clock is ticking, and of course, all of them are talking, talking very, very bragging, boasting, and uh, it's part of uh, boxing. You must talk and before, you know, put your fist where it uh, comes. Uh, that's the countdown on boxing, then to Wider versus Tyson Fury. Let's equally look at. 163 days to Tokyo Olympics. That's the major topical issue in uh, sports. We talk about Olympics, it's all in Britain. All the sports are jammed into one. And of course, the world best you know, will be in Tokyo. All eyes will be in Tokyo. Tokyo will be the sign of show of all eyes. And back home, we are equally looking down on uh, you know, Nigerian athletes and of course sports. The sportsmen and women in Nigeria are doing brilliantly well. And of course, they are picking their tickets. We just uh, talked about uh, wrestling. The wrestlers yesterday, unfortunately, failed to touch down at the Murutula Mohammed International Airport. They could not fly, you know, because uh, Turkish airline, you know, did not fly because of uh, weather problems. And uh, so many people are concerned. But the president of uh, Nigerian Wrestling Federation, Daniel Egali, came up today to say that there is nothing to be worried about. It's, uh, I think, the best thing about flying is that you fly when it is best for you to fly and uh, that uh, Turkey airline you know indeed took care of all expenses you know taking them to the hotel you know allowing them you know sleep there is no other extra expenses that's uh, you know part of uh, you know the expenses that uh, the airlines incur the wrestlers talk about uh, wrestlers every time we talk about wrestlers who are preparing for the olympics we focus on females yeah. and the two females that we focus on you know, dear, um, sorry, uh, Adekuroye and uh, Blessing Oboro. Today, we talked about it with uh, Daniel Egale, and uh, he was just saying that uh, indeed, when two outstanding people, when there are two people that are outstanding, it somehow overshadows the other box, uh, the other wrestlers. There are other wrestlers in the male.
category that if only will be going. They did that a flagship talk about uh, Uburu Dudu and uh, Adekuroye, you know. So the females, they are on top of uh, the men. Yeah, they are on top of the men. Uh, it, it doesn't really matter whether they are the ones on top, but we want to see everybody's performance. We want to see how everybody is doing. So just because they are the flagship doesn't mean that people are not also looking at the work. Because they, definitely they can't do this alone. They can't do this alone. So people are looking not only to both of them, they are also looking out towards others. And I remember that we were saying that uh, um, they are looking towards training other people to come up and meet them, not just the two of them, you know, standing out and you know, when later on and they will leave and they are, they are still bringing up other people. So that shows that it's not only the both of them that Nigerians are looking at, we're looking at all that. Okay, important thing is that you don't even care who is on top, whether it's a woman that is on top or a man that is on top. Ah, no, I don't. I just don't know. But as a lady, it's also something of pride for me that a woman is on top. Yeah, on top. Yes. Okay. It's not who is on top. I think uh, what is important is the medals that will the come medals. to Nigeria. They are Nigerians, male or female. Definitely, they will bring it up, telling you that the producers themselves they are thinking, you know, very, very wise. We are talking about being on top of uh, medals for for Nigeria, Team Nigeria. That's exactly what we're looking at. Looking at uh, the females and the males, and of course. All of them are qualifying. Then from there, we go to Nigerian Professional Football League. Today, there are going to be matches. And just give me a peep of the matches that we have today. Uh, I think we'll be having the Rangers versus Jigawa. You know, this Rangers versus Jigawa, a lot of people have been looking at this. And I think I read that Rangers are saying that they are ready to, they are really ready to take over Jigawa to beat them. And you know, what we're looking about this Rangers and Jigawa, you know, sometimes, sometimes you know, Rangers was actually hard. You know, compared to Jigawa, but now I think due to some circumstances, Jigawa yeah, Rangers are now below Jigawa. With uh, Jigawa having the 17 points, 20 points, and Rangers having 17 points, and so this is really going to be a match of. Uh, it's really going to be a match of looking at uh, who's going to be best and the points. Every point counts for the both of them because we are looking at Rangers. Rangers is really high. It's almost the same thing as um, Manchester United and uh, Norwich. Absolutely. And so that is how we're looking at uh, Rangers versus uh, Jigawa. I will be having Eiba Eiba versus uh, Abia. And uh, we'll be having Aqua United versus Daka. Daka. Dakada. Yes, Dakada. And we're looking at this uh, Aqua United versus uh, Dakada. I think Aqua United also, and uh, Dakada is a number five. And they have um, they, their points, they have uh, 29 points. And uh, Aqua United have. Um, they have 28 points. So every point really counts when it comes to the both of them. So they want to, it's like each point counts for anybody. They don't, they don't want to climb up, everybody wants to go up. So Dakada is with uh, 29 points and Aqua is with uh, 20, 28 points. Absolutely. And that's uh, the Nigerian Professional Football League. Rangers are fighting out of relegation. You know, like Dami said, Rangers. You know, you just uh, measure Rangers in the likes of uh, Manchester United. I do not know why the two big clubs, both in Nigeria and uh, out there in the English Premier League, they are the ones who are down. They are down, but not yet out. Rangers, we have seen consistency in their last uh, three, four matches. And of course, all the Enugu Rangers are looking forward that perhaps the Rangers International will fly. Fly not tell you they call them and we expect that uh, they will do well today and fly. If they win the three points uh, and put it in their kitty, indeed they will be waving by to the relegation waters. And of course, Enyimba versus Adewaros, you know, state uh, teams they are, but then in terms of seniority, Enyimba is uh, the most senior to Adewaros. You know, younger brothers, they have a way of challenging their elder brothers. But I must tell you that Enyimba do not only, it's not just only being senior to Adewaros, Enyimba is the most successful club in Nigeria, having won the Champions League twice, back to back, 2003-2004. I was there, and I remember former governor of uh, uh, Abia State, you know, he too was there. That was when sports was sports in Abia State, and, uh, you know, it was uh, the center point of everybody in Nigeria. And then from Aqua United to Dakanda, just as it is in Enyimba versus Abia Oroso, so it is in Aqua United versus Dakada. Aqua United is the elder brother of Dakada, but then the younger ones are doing absolutely better than their elder brothers. But indeed today, so that's just the type of fight that we expect. And uh, we expect that Aqua United being home, home is home, you know, for the two clubs, you know, that they are going to slog it out. And then after that, you know, we begin to see how it goes. But the interesting thing about the Nigerian Professional Football League 
is that uh, it has no respect for whether you are home or away. And, uh, you know, they have doing, been doing well. You know, from there we look up to, you know, in the foreign scene, we've seen uh, talks about uh, Juve, Juventus, you know, uh, wanting to attract a very heavyweight coach, you okay. know, uh, Guardiola. Do you think it's a possibility that Guardiola can abandon Manchester City and go to Italy? Yeah, it's, uh, there's every possibility that he can. You know, there's the speculations that Juve wants uh, Guardiola, you know, uh, looking at it, uh, Juve, you know, they've been looking towards achieving the championship league, getting a better brand. Um, Guardiola, I think he has, he has really gotten this uh, for for Barcelona before. For Barcelona, he, yes. He has gotten it for Barcelona. Anywhere he has gone to. Yes, he, he has gotten well. it for Barcelona, I think twice. And Juve really want this, considering that with the other former coach, their former coaches have been getting them the same thing that they've had before in, their, in, in Italy. So, like the Serie A, they've had it for like eight years consecutively. So, they really want the champion. And they believe that if they have Guardiola with them, he will get this, he will be able to get this for them. So, I think that is what they really want to do. And I think they, 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 they can do this. And that's uh, when you talk about uh, attracting a uh, you know, very heavyweight uh, coach like uh, Guardiola to you know, um, Juve, they call themselves uh, the old lady. And, uh, you know, that also involves so much money because, uh, you know, not only bringing Gadela, that means you'll be ready to splash money on so many players. The Champions League, it's, uh, you know, the diadem that almost every coach and of course so many fans. The president of uh, Juve, you know, really wants, if he really wants to make history, if he really wants to endear himself to the minds of so many supporters, and of course some of them are politicians, if they want to make a statement, to enhance their popularity in the minds of so many people, they get it through football. And uh, what do they get? It is the Champions League, and of course, the type of personalities that they attract. Well, Ronaldo has changed the fortune of Juve in uh, merchandise. The merchandise and so much money has been streaming in, you know, into Juve. The world will just be waiting because Guardiola has repeatedly denied that he's not going to leave Manchester City. That's how they always talk. But perhaps <laughs> too much money can make so many people, you know, just swallow their ways. From there, we move into the most valuable player. We're just hearing about uh, Salah and uh, Messi. Messi. Just uh, what's happening? Um, Messi, uh, Mes uh, Salah now thinking about is now the most valuable player compared wow. to Messi. Wow. And uh, ah, this people, this is really raising a lot of uh, issues that uh, Salah overtakes Messi. And looking at it, as of, as of May twenty eighteen. Uh, Messi was worth um, 180 million euros, and uh, but in uh, December 2019, it is now worth 140 million euros, and that has really gone down. But Salah, over the time, he has he is uh, worth 150 million euros, so now he's not the most valuable player compared to Messi. And then, uh, but interestingly, uh, in the games of this season, uh, Messi has actually played 28 games and he has, has uh, 19 goals, and uh, he has provided 15 assists. Meanwhile, Salah, he has had 33 games, higher games, and he has had 33 games, he has had uh, 18 goals and 9 assists. So it's really interesting that uh, Messi has really gone down. Salah has really gone up in terms of uh, money. It's, an, uh, it's, it's, it's so unbelievable when you talk about money. The figures that you mentioned, you know, the type of money, I sometimes it's unimaginable to think about it because if I put this type of money in my calculator, my calculator will even break down. It's I think there, there, was that's a time, exactly. there was a time I was calling one amount of money here then and I just raised one and, I'm, and uh, the assistant director they just raised this and, I'm, and he was like, ah, see the way you, see the way you raised the lab, that's the Z. And he was like, why, 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 why would you shout like that? I said the money was actually, you know, it was too much, it's, the uh, money, yes, Gary, this it's, million, you million it's incredible. euros, it's incredible. It's, yeah. It's incredible when you talk about uh, how much these players earn. Talk about somebody earning three hundred and fifty thousand pounds, not a year, just a week. Just one week. And some of us have been uh, laboring to the like, kingdom come. <laughs> okay, just like uh, teachers, our reward is uh, in heaven. I think I need to get my own reward here. On this. I think so. If I want, if I get to heaven, I take the heavenly reward. <laughs> That's exactly how. We have been on uh, Vanguard Live sports segment. I tell you, that is the most interesting, you know, it is uh, most engaging when you talk sports, you know, with a brilliant, brilliant female who also brings so much spice into it, radiating beauty, radiating so much knowledge and intelligence, and of course, infecting me 
with her impetuous smile. That's exactly how we call it a day. Dami? Yes, I also want to say it's not only just me, I think I've been with uh, the most interesting person also here. So to me, it's really a pleasure being this with her. So, so. Okay, Dami, before we go, it's, uh, love is in the air. Yes, so Are you forgetting? <laughs> I didn't forget it. I didn't forget it. We've actually been talking about it in the studio, and I remember asking my director for uh, for for my Valentine gift, and he said, "No, I'm the one that's supposed to provide you the Valentine gift, not him actually." Oh, the director will give you a Valentine gift. <laughs> he said, "He said I shouldn't. He said I shouldn't expect it. He said I shouldn't expect Valentine. It's ladies first. Mm -hmm. But you know, there are some things that we don't actually look at ladies first. In terms of gifts, we are not looking at the ladies first." Don't Okay, that's uh, that's very very interesting. Uh, Valentine's Day is on Friday. Go out there and celebrate love. The love we're talking about is agape love, love of Jesus Christ. You know, just <laughs> where you impact on the lives of so many people. Some people do not believe on Valentine's Day because so many of them say that every day is a Valentine's Day. Love is an everyday affair. But whatever it is, if the world has set out a day to remember love, let us remember love in the right direction. Let's just do it so that we do not finish on uh, 14th, February 14th, you know, the next month, uh, March, you know, getting up to nine months, so many people will be crying. You know exactly what I mean? I think uh, love is infectious. Let's touch somebody's uh, life with true love. My name remains uh, Tony Obani and uh, Dami. Dami Lola Umushaki. Okay, and uh, that's exactly how we do not anchor for sports on Vanyard Life. Thank <laughs> you.